how do you think you've learned to take up space? I'm very aggressive. I've learned to be very aggressive to the point where I always joke that if anybody ever saw me on an airplane, they would not like me at all. No. Well, I actually cannot believe that I'm just about to say this, but Christina, welcome to Raid. How are you? Oh, thank you. I'm good. How are you doing? I'm so good. Let's get into Yellow Jackets. Let's start from there. And I mean, wow, what a show. It's part mystery, part supernatural, part horror, with a bit of comedy and cannibalism thrown into the mix. It's it's a real cocktail. Was there a plot twist that really had you stepping back and going, whoa, <laughs> didn't quite see this one coming? The way season two ends um, is really surprising and shocking. And I didn't see it coming at all. I think that there's a little bit of misty in all of us in a way, because she does have that kind of like people pleasing element. She wants to be accepted, but then she's kind of battling herself at the same time. And she does have a lot going on. What did you resonate with her over? You know, the basic desire that she has is very relatable, you know, to be included and to be part of the group, um, to understand popular society, which I think she really doesn't um, at her core kind of get or value b beyond sort of this idea of being um, included. Uh, but she also is somebody who is shunned sort of from the pack for good reasons, because once you include her, she does things that hurt other people, um, not necessarily intentionally. I don't think her intentions are ever sinister, but she just has so... Um, she just has no boundaries and her sort of moral compass is not the same as everybody else's. So I think a lot of the darker things she does make sense to her, but it's just like her ability to go way beyond what is uh, acceptable. That is a problem. So I relate to like the compulsive need, the nonstop. Comp I, I relate to the fact that we are, all as humans have this compulsive need Um whatever it is, need, and usually it's need to be loved. Um, and that is definitely something I think Misty has, although I don't know that she actually has the capacity to feel what real love is or to understand love. It's so interesting, that idea of acceptance versus self-acceptance and finding acceptance within yourself, because that's such, that is a universal journey we all go on, don't we? What's that journey towards self-acceptance been like for you? I think that, you know, I'm a little similar to Misty in that I very much have accepted who I am. And I think she very much accepts who she is. I don't know that she or I have that objectivity to be able to see ourselves the way that others see us. I've always known and in the past when I was sort of trying to be a little bit more, um, you know, I don't know, for professional reasons, commercial or broadly uh, liked. I always knew that it would be me pretending. I never thought I had to actually change myself. I just was like, well, just do this thing now so that you gain access to this or that or the other. Um, but I think that that is a very difficult thing to do. I feel like this, it must have been such a joy to get a character like Misty at this point in your career, because, you know, we hear the likes of Nicole Kidman and the Reese have been talking about how they weren't offered the roles that they would have expected or wanted to play or the roles they feel like they deserved. Do you feel like Yellow Jackets and Misty is still a rare example of you being offered a role you deserve? Do you ever get frustrated with some of the roles that you're offered? Yeah, I mean, I get offered a lot of things that I wouldn't do. Um, I read a lot of scripts that I don't like or I don't think are good or, you know, I again, I don't take it personally. Um, I was really excited about Misty just because she's such a fun character and I'm allowed so much freedom with her. I think they really, you know, the writers write what they write, but then I am really given, I'm not micromanaged at all by them and I'm given the sort of freedom to execute what they write in whatever way I want to, um, however weird it is or different. And that's really, really wonderful. Um, I think for me, what's really special about this is the amount of trust I am given by our EPs, especially with a character like this, that 
I think other creatives would look at and just, I feel like this character would make other creatives really nervous and they just don't have that reaction. So that's, that's the thing that I think is most special because I don't feel old. So I don't feel like, oh, for my age, I can't believe I'm getting this amazing part. You know, I'm 43. And in most professions, that is the age where you do achieve like, you know, CEO or <laughs> all of those things. So to me, it doesn't feel like um, amazing that I'm in my 40s and this is happening. Um, I feel more like just really lucky to have a character that is so um, creatively uh, inspiring. And it's great that the entertainment industry is caught up with that because we we don't have enough of that discussion because we see people, it's almost used to be like you hit over 30 and then it was like, oh, you're done now. And it's there's so much amazing four-dimensional characters and stories to be told in every single age range. And this is what this show really stands for. Yeah. I mean, we have we have a whole cast of 20-somethings and then a whole cast of 40-year-old women. Um, and it's great. I, you know, I think there's still tons of content that reflects um, a, sort of the attitudes of old. Um, but thankfully, I think with with the creation of all these streaming platforms, there needed to be so many different there needed to be so much content created that it that they let in a lot of different kind of voices and and perspectives. And it must be so interesting to have returned to Wednesday. It was so great to be included in the in the in Wednesday and um, to play a different character in Wednesday and be a part of it and work with Tim and the whole thing was really really fun. I don't think I'm going to get nominated for an Emmy for that. But, you know, there's so many other incredible performances that I really think, I think my chances are low, <laughs> but, but it, it's, but it's really great. I mean, and, um, and I just think in general, it, the experience with Wednesday was really a rewarding one for me. How was it rewarding for you going back to Wednesday? I was thrilled to be a part of it, you know, and to be able to speak on behalf of why this character should be um, recreated for different generations and why she is such a great role model. I think it's been great to be able to talk about that, but from a point of view where I'm not actually playing that character, I think that's been really wonderful. And just the shooting experience was so great. You know, I loved working with Jenna. She was so good and she's so such an interesting person and I really like the kind of woman that she is um, and the kind of actor she is. Um, and then I loved working with Gwendolyn. That was so fun. I love her so much. Um, uh, so it was just all in all a really fantastic experience. And could there be a comeback for season two? I, I really don't know. I haven't been told anything yet. I don't know. Well, I'm crossing my fingers. I mean, the thing to consider, though, also is that if Yellow Jacket shoots at the same time as Wednesday, I, will, I would not be able to do anything in Wednesday. So it might be one of those, like just scheduling logistical not possible things <laughs> you're like i can't be in two places at once guys <laughs> they won't let me either <laughs> when you look back at your career and sort of the way that you know women have been treated in um the entertainment business and the kind of sexism everyday sexism you have to come up against all the time is there a moment of sexism that still really shocks you or is there everyday sexism you still have to come up against where you're like Oh, here we go. <laughs> I've been, I mean, you do encounter it all the time still. Like even really bizarre time, not bizarre, but really like small everyday ways. I feel like every time I travel, I have to be really aware of the fact that I'm a small woman and mm. like fight for my space, at a, you know, on a plane or an airport. And, you know, just little things like that, I think, really still exist. How do you think you've learned to take up space? I'm very aggressive. I've learned to be very aggressive um, to the point where I always joke that if anybody ever saw me on an airplane, they would not like me at all. <laughs> no. Mm -mm. I'm intrigued to know what you're like on the, on the, on the, on the plane now. For um, Yellow Jackets, they, we shoot in Vancouver, Canada, and I live in LA, and I have an eight-year-old son who goes to school here, so I commute back and forth. Um, to shoot up there. And it's only an hour and a half. No, I think it's, it's like a two and a half hour flight. 
but it's always full of businessmen. And like, if you don't get your overhead space, someone else is taking that space from you and then they're taking your carry on bag. And I only travel with a carry on bag because I cannot stand to wait for luggage. And so, um, I'm that jerk that stands, you know, the, the like boarding lines, they have like Mm -hmm. zone one, zone two, and then people line up. I get in line, first in line, 20 minutes before they call boarding. (laughs) And I don't care what anyone thinks. I stand in that line. I wait in that line. I don't care. If someone tries to go past me, I'm like, do you not understand how lines work? This is (laughs) clearly a line. You know, I, there's like, no, you cannot, (laughs) you cannot shake me. You cannot rattle me. I am waiting in that line. So I'm always like first on the plane, get by, and then I'm the first person off the plane. And I am small enough to wiggle in between people, get my bags, get down. And I'm always first because, and then I usually like race to customs. And I have like, I, I now know this special route through customs where you do like the app in advance. And then in Canada, you know, you get to go in this line that no one knows about. People will like, people will be like, how are you out of this airport in 15 minutes? And I'm like, oh, no, you don't understand. <laughs> I have a whole thing. And when people don't abide by the rules where it's like this row and then that row, and then that, like I, w- I will speak up. I will say something. I love this. I love how the aircraft and the airplane has become your kind of metaphor for life. But also, I feel like there's something very triggering about flying, <laughs> especially when you fly a lot. So like I get like my heart starts racing the second we like pull up to the gate. Like I, it just really triggers this like fight or flight thing in me, which I think it does with a lot of people. And that's why a lot of people act a little crazy at airports. <laughs> I now only want to travel with you because I feel like you get shit done. Yeah, but it's tough. Like it's not, it's a tough situation. Sometimes I travel with my son and he knows he's like, okay, ready we go like we put our shoes on the second that we land and like by the time we get the shoes are on backpacks ready to go we're going he like grabs my hand and we just like but so it's a it's a little bit much i think to yeah. travel with me <laughs> i love how you just do not mean business at all <laughs> you just mean business you're like i'm yeah. doing it i'm getting i'm getting out of here i have a life to live <laughs> I love it. Well, it's been so great talking today. And we always Thank end you. on one last question. That is, in the reign of your life, what is the one rule you'll always live by? I think sort of an unspoken rule for me is, and something I'm learning as well, because I'm bad at saying no. I tend to say yes a lot and then not really be able to fulfill all the commitments I've made. So trying to sort of live by this rule of, you know, does it is it something that makes me happy is it something that serves my family is it something that is good for me and I guess learning a little bit more um just a little bit more healthy amount of um egotism I guess if that's a word is that a word egotism um I think it is I think that that's definitely a word (laughs) yay bing 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 (laughs) I'm like, please, maybe don't ask me what the definition of it is, because I will have to. No, go I mean, I know what I mean to say, like, <laughs> yeah. like, you know, a little bit more like egocentric yes. kind of decision making. Yes, and doing things yes. that serve you and not always in the service of others. Yeah, because then, because I lived my life for a really long time feeling constantly like put upon or feeling like I had no space to do the things that I really needed to do um, to for myself and my family. And um, just learning, just learning sort of a, a change in those kinds of things. Hmm. Do you feel like you've got to the point in your life now where you have your full power in that sense? No, <laughs> no, no, I'm still trying. 